Greetings and salivations. Welcome to another Eldritch lesson. As always, I am Umforth Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers, and you are listening to The Eldritch God. For years now, non SJWs have been unable to understand how SJWs can draw the conclusions they have. To the non-SJW, the social justice warrior seems totally nonsensical. I've examined a few social justice converts to non-social justice stances, and the key difference becomes clear. And yes, it is a single key point. It is a fundamental truth that one must accept on some level to be a social justice warrior. If you do not accept this cornerstone, you cannot be called a social justice warrior. Without this fundamental truth, an SJW has no internal logic and their paradigm makes no sense. What is this one truth? Everyone is equal, therefore you cannot judge anyone. Social justice warriors claim to be anti-hate, but they are actually anti-judgment. They claim to oppose racism, sexism, homophobia, fat shaming, slut shaming, shame shaming, etc, etc, etc. But then, non-social justice warriors point out how they don't seem to apply the same logic equally across the board. Non-SJWs cannot figure out the reasons why social justice warriors apparently lack consistency. To understand this, we must ask the question, what is the one common theme? Answer, they are forms of judgment. At this point, I will call in a straw man. But Eldritch God, social justice warriors judge people all the time. Really, straw man? Can you give me an example? Yes, social justice warriors claim all straight, white, cisgendered males are bad people. They are of the patriarchy, and the patriarchy is evil. And what part of that statement is a judgment? Excuse me? What part of that statement is an opinion? What you just said was not an opinion, it was an assertion. You know, I hate to do this, but I think we need to turn to the dictionary. Now, it's important why social justice warriors think they don't judge when they say all white men are born evil. It's important to understand what an opinion is and what an assertion is to both the social justice warrior and non-social justice warriors. An assertion is a claim to truth. For example, the earth is flat. This is an assertion. It is an assertion that can be proven or disproven, although whether or not the proof is accepted by all parties is an entirely different issue, and one that we will not be addressing here. An opinion, on the other hand, is always true, unless the speaker is deliberately being deceptive. However, for the purposes of our examples, let us assume that I am always speaking the truth when I state an opinion. So, if I state, I believe the world is flat, that is a true statement. I do believe the world is flat, and unless you can climb inside my head, you cannot prove that I don't believe the world is flat. Now, because all opinions are true, we have the issue of how to argue opinions. There are a few options. One could force the person making an opinion to make it an assertion. This is done typically by stating simply, prove it. However, someone stating an opinion is not required to prove their opinion. So therefore, the more popular option is to attack the character of the person stating the opinion. Now, normally, ad hominem attacks are a bad form of debate. Don't attack the messenger, attack the message. However, in this case, when dealing with opinions, the messenger is making himself part of the message. I am stating that I believe that the earth is flat. Therefore, my character and people's opinion of me are all contributing factors to my message. In this case, by stating an opinion and not an assertion, I must accept any and all personal attacks. To put it another way, a homeless man holding a sign saying, Repent, the end is near, is not as credible a source as the Pope saying, Repent, the end is near. One certainly holds more weight in the eyes of some and less in others. 
Now, if you are a social justice warrior and everyone is equal, you cannot judge one person more worthy than another. Conclusion, the Pope and the homeless man's opinion must have equal weight. So what effect does this have on the concept of opinions? If we cannot judge the messenger when the messenger is part of the message, then how can we judge opinions without judging the messenger? The answer is to assume that all opinions are actually assertions. I am not thinking the world is flat, I am claiming the world is flat. By making this leap of logic, all messengers become messages, while at the same time making all opinions statements that can be judged. Since messengers are messages, we can state that we are judging the message, but not the messenger, because messengers no longer exist. To social justice warriors, there are no messengers to judge. Everyone is a message. Social justice warriors do not judge the flesh before them, just everything the flesh stands for. As a side note, this is also the basis for the claim that all forms of identity are social constructs. You are not a person, you are a message. Being male, white, cis, whatever, it's all just part of your message. Since being male is objectively bad, then you, being a message of maleness, are therefore objectively bad as well. I am not judging you. I am judging your message of maleness. This is the fundamental truth for social justice warriors, but it is not universally applied. It is the fact that this concept is inconsistently applied depending on the degree in which the social justice warrior accepts this fundamental truth that makes it difficult for us to recognize that it is a core belief of social justice warriors at all. And furthermore, it's why I think up until this point, people simply don't understand what has been happening. Some social justice warriors hold the belief more strongly than others. To some, staying, I like blue, is perfectly fine. They recognize it as an opinion in the traditional sense. Liking a color does not reach the opinion is an assertion threshold for that particular social justice warrior. To a different social justice warrior, saying, I like blue, is a form of sexism because the color blue holds sexist connotations in their subjective perception of reality. Since there is no subjective slash objective reality for the extreme social justice warrior, there is just reality. Their subjective viewpoint is projected onto everyone else. Therefore, blue is sexist because they feel blue is sexist. Their opinion becomes fact and they act upon that fact even if everyone else on the planet thinks they are insane. <laughs> The stronger the social justice warrior holds the belief that everyone is equal, therefore judge not, the more illogical they appear to non-social justice warriors who accept that judgment of others is an acceptable and natural part of human existence. Put out in the open like this, to a social justice warrior listening to this video, this might sound like complete nonsense. But the question for them is, have you been selectively applying this principle? Do you view opinions as assertions even in limited situations? You might not do it all the time, but do you do it some of the time? Think about it. Don't answer me. The question is only of importance to yourself. It will lead to self-awareness, which is the goal for this lesson. What other conclusions can we draw from this? Well, it certainly explains the SJW position on hate speech. To the social justice warrior, hate speech is not someone expressing an opinion. It is someone asserting that someone else is actually less than human. It is a claim of objective fact, not subjective opinion. To the social justice warrior, if I call you a jerk, I am not claiming I have a low opinion of you. I am stating you are subhuman. The social justice warrior assumes that I am actually making an objective statement. I am objectively trying to prove that they are inferior. They don't understand that I can hate them as an individual, but still have respect for them as a human being. I could hate all black people, but I can still respect black people's rights. I can hate what you have to say, but I can fight for your right to express it. To the non-SJW, there is a clear-cut difference. To the social justice warrior, there is none. Hating what someone has to say is the same as hating them to an SJW. If what you have to say is worthy of hating, then you are worthy of hating. This is not them judging you. This is an objective fact. You are worthy of hate because your opinion is worthy of hate 
because we can prove or disprove that your speech is bad. You are the message. You are not a messenger. As a counterpoint, is there a non-SJW who would debate that saying X is an inferior being is a form of discrimination if there is evidence to prove that such a statement is false? No, clearly not. Social justice warriors and non-social justice warriors would agree on this point. Where we disagree is the concept of opinions can be objectively wrong. If you believe that I think X is true cannot be disproven because you cannot prove what the person is thinking, then you must accept that opinions are normally true. But if you assume I think X is true really means X is true, then communication over key talking points becomes all but impossible. This is why social justice warriors and non-social justice warriors have problems debating. The non-social justice warrior listens to an SJW state, you are evil, and what he hears is an opinion. Since the non-social justice warrior has no respect for the social justice warrior, the non-SJW simply does not care. They can express their opinion all they want. To the non-SJW, they simply don't value the opinion, and thus their self-esteem is not dependent on the SJW's accusation. The non-SJW does not understand that the SJW is actually making an assertion. The SJW is actually claiming that the non-SJW is objectively evil. The non-SJW thinks he's being judged and dismisses the statement, while the social justice warrior thinks she's making an objective statement that could be debated. This is also why when social justice warriors state, I wish non-SJWs would debate us, they seem so intolerant and unable to discuss things. The SJWs are so confused when a non-SJW jumps in and starts making aggressive assertions and debating. To the social justice warrior, there is no difference between assertions and opinions. Therefore, facts and truths that hurt are offensive. The SJW takes it personal because an attack on the message is an attack on them, for all they are is a message. The non-social justice warrior sees opinions as subjective and facts as objective. The SJW sees opinions and facts as the same thing. Therefore, there is no subjective or objective. Everything is debatable and can be seen as objective or subjective truth. It all depends on the point of view of the social warrior because, well, in the end, it's all the same thing. The definitions become meaningless when you treat the objective and the subjective as equal. This is also why SJWs tend to run from debate. To them, debate is very painful. They are being personally attacked from their perception. Even though the non-social justice warrior does not take anything personal, and what he says may not be intended as a personal attack, the social justice warrior finds themselves talking to someone who seems as dense in the head as lead. The social justice warrior perceives the non-SJW as inhumanly resistant to being offended, while at the same time the social justice warrior feels they are constantly being personally attacked. To all non-SJWs, I ask you, how long would you debate someone if during the entire debate you were being constantly insulted? Every time your opponent ended a statement, they said, you cocksucking loser, and they opened up every statement with, listen up cunt. How long will you debate such an individual? This is how the social justice warrior perceives debate. The non-social justice warrior sees debate as impersonal, and the SJW takes everything personally. It is why when an SJW makes a point, any attempt to debate at length is doomed to failure. Imagine trying to talk to someone insulting you for hours. To the social justice warrior, it is actually painful. They believe they are being judged personally, so the very thought of reading over 18 pages, say 7,500 words, of detailed reply, systematically proving and or disproving every individual point that the social justice warrior may have made, is absolutely daunting. To them, it would appear as a Herculean effort that only a dedicated masochist could possibly endure. To the non-social justice warrior who created the rant, it's just a rant, and it's completely impersonal. Or rather, it should be. The problem is there are no absolutes. Some parts will be intentionally or unintentionally personal, especially when frustration over poor communication mounts. These select outbursts will become agreed upon as offensive statements and further confuse the issue. The non-social justice warrior will wonder why the SJW takes such disproportional offense at being called something as mild as a jerk. When the social justice warrior wonders why 
they should have to put up with this constant barrage of veiled insults. And now, there is a openly blatant attack, and they have to endure this just to try to discuss things? Why can't these non-social justice warriors just be more reasonable? The non-social justice warrior thinks to himself, I wouldn't be offended by this, so why should they be? While the social justice warrior has been trying to contain their anger since the debate began. This is why social justice warriors so often just start insulting non-social justice warriors and don't even bother discussing issues. To the social justice warrior, the non-social justice warrior, has already slapped them across the face. So what is the point of civility? Besides, I'm not insulting the non-social justice warrior. I'm stating an objective truth. What I am stating is objective fact. Who could dispute what I'm saying? I'm not judging him. I'm just saying the objective truth. And that objective truth is, non-social justice warriors are all meanie poo-poo heads. It's just a fact. As non-social justice warriors get increasingly frustrated with the lack of understanding on such so-called basic concepts, they too tend to shift towards lashing out. What's worse, both sides may progress to a point where they believe any form of dialogue is simply impossible. Then they will shift tactics to simply pushing their individual agendas. Alas, social justice warriors have been doing this for quite some time given their level of frustration with other people. And now, opposing anti-social justice warriors, not to be confused with non-social justice warriors, are starting to accept a similar stance. When communication and debate becomes impossible due to such a fundamental truth not being understood by either party, other methods of problem solving will inevitably be used. And unfortunately, these may be rather extreme. Opinion is assertion and assertion is opinion. All messages are attacks. All statements can be good and evil, true and false. And it is by this belief that social justice warriors claim that there is hate speech, while non-social justice warriors can claim that it doesn't exist. They are both wrong. It isn't free speech that both sides value, it is true speech. This is why social justice warriors say you can say whatever you want, but there may be a price. And also why non-SJWs go, no, free speech should not have a price, that's why it's called free. They both view it through ideological lenses. The classic example is the crying out of the word fire in a movie theater. To the social justice warrior, this is a dangerous act and can harm people. The word is bad, so it should be banned. The non-social justice warrior believes that the act is bad, except that sometimes the movie theater is actually on fire, so you should be able to yell fire when the place is actually burning down. This is where we see the major difference in so-called free speech. SJWs would ban being able to say the word fire entirely. Non-social justice warriors want to ban the use of the word fire when shouting it is a lie. It should be legal to warn people when the place is actually burning down. Social justice warriors want to ban people from being able to say fire in theaters forever because it doesn't happen much. The social justice warrior perspective would claim the few times shouting fire would be good are far outweighed by the times that it is bad. This is because of the way social justice warriors value people is not the same as non-social justice warriors. The value of the outcomes have an entirely different scale depending on your perception of things. Now, substitute the word faggot or nigger or Pollock or wop or any other racial or sexual so-called hate words. To the social justice warrior, the words themselves are concepts and all concepts can be objectively good or evil. To the non-social justice warrior, these words are opinions and are a reflection of the messenger and are not a message in and of themselves. Use of words and concepts to harm someone's self-esteem makes you part of the message. So, the non-social justice warrior judges the person, but the message itself is accepted as valid. For example, you could say, you are a faggot polar. You apparently have a poor opinion of those two groups, depending on how you say the words. Context, tone, facial expression, body language all affect the outcome. However, the non-social justice warrior is more concerned about your actions, not your thoughts. You can hate all Pollocks and all faggots, but if you don't take action to discriminate, then there is no actual problem. To the social justice warrior, thoughts are opinions and opinions are action. 
opinions can be wrong, and thus hate speech is an action that harms. Non-social justice warriors don't want to ban these words and object to any attempt to do so. Social justice warriors think they are protecting people from evil. Non-social justice warriors think they are protecting people's freedom. Non-social justice warriors want to know people's opinions, even the bad ones. If we don't know what people think, we cannot identify what people have bad opinions. And thus, we cannot seek to convince them that they should think a different way. You cannot destroy a concept by stopping people from expressing said concept. You cannot change someone's opinion without knowing it first. Now, there is a case for containment. If we stop people from saying the word WAP, for example, and we erase it from every book and every file on the internet and every recording of the word WAP everywhere, then when everyone who ever knew the word WAP all die off, no one will be able to say it again because nobody will even know what the word was. Unfortunately, the fundamental concept of WAP still exists, and all that will happen is that someone somewhere will create a word that means the same thing, then start saying that word as a substitute. The social justice warrior belief that opinions are assertion and thus subject to objective assessment leads to the belief that all words are always assertions. Alas, words are just a vehicle to convey concepts. It is the concepts that social justice warriors have problems with. Concepts can be communicated in so many ways with so many different methods, it's next to impossible to have any sort of real-time, long-term containment of a concept that will function without absolutely draconian methods of control of a given population. This is why social justice warriors are all authoritarian. You have to crush individual rights to contain evil thoughts for the betterment of all. If all messengers are messages, then there is no other way to kill the message without killing the host. The very act of trying to contain a concept by containing the words affects the concept itself. Claiming that nigger is bad makes it bad. And if you substitute the phrase the N-word, this gives the original word mystique, a certain air of importance that it is the one and only word that can be referred to as beginning with N. In fact, this gives the word nigger even more power. You cannot kill a concept by thinking about it. You can only kill a concept when you stop thinking about it. You must ignore it. You must make the concept laughable and unimportant. If you truly wish to destroy racism, sexism, homophobia, Islamophobia, phobia, phobia, fat shaming, slut shaming, shame shaming, then you cannot do it by fighting the concepts themselves. Fighting a concept only makes it stronger. Love does not kill hate. Hate and love are just two aspects of the same end of the spectrum of caring. You have to care about someone to hate them. You have to care about someone to love them. The true polar opposite of love is apathy. The true opposite of hate is being constructive. I'll be explaining this graph in more detail in another video. To summarize up to this point, if you accept everyone is equal, then you cannot judge. Then there is no objective reality or subjective reality. There is just reality. Then opinions are meaningless, and everything becomes an assertion. Then all statements can be proven or disproven as true or false, right or wrong. Then every concept is potentially dangerous, and every spoken word is a threat. For this reason, I urge people when discussing matters with social justice warriors to instead of making claims to the right to free speech, to make a claim to the right to true speech. What I mean is, everybody has the right to speak the truth. We do not have the right to lie or to be deceptive. Every social justice warrior will accept this at face value. In fact, they already do. It is in their heart of hearts. This is part and parcel of what social justice warriors want. They want everyone to speak truth. The problem is, they just don't agree with non-social justice warriors as to what truth is. But if you can find this common ground, then you need to convince the social justice warrior that opinions are always true. Unless the speaker is deliberately lying, of course. If I believe you are a jerk, I am not saying you are a jerk. I am saying that is my opinion. Explaining what an opinion is and then being very careful to make sure all opinions are clearly stated as such. You may find your discussion with social justice warriors to go much smoother. It is important to make it clear that you cannot debate what someone believes. They do believe what they believe. Think of it as the readout on a thermostat. It might read 65 degrees, but you can still feel hot. 
I can state it's down to 65 degrees, which most people find quite cool. But to you, you feel hot. I cannot argue with you about how you feel. You do feel hot. This is a fundamental truth of your existence. It might be cool in the room, but you are not cool. We can argue if the room is cool, but any argument about how you feel is doomed to failure. Now I can tell you, use this fan, and then you may start to feel cool afterwards. But I did not argue with you. I provided the means to change how you feel, which is not the same as having a debate on if you feel hot or not. Understanding this example will help you to understand why feelings are not assertions. What I think, what I feel, what I believe, what I know, these are all qualifiers that can precede a claim of opinion. However, all too often in conversation we leave off these qualifiers and just assume that the people we are speaking with can understand when we are saying an opinion because there is context. However, as I have shown, this is not the case with social justice warriors. It is important when talking to a social justice warrior to know they do not automatically put these qualifiers in front of opinions when you are talking to them. This can lead to a great deal of misunderstanding. If you are careful to establish with them that opinions are always true, and get them to agree on it, and you are careful to make sure to add the qualifiers before all of your opinions, the conversation will go much smoother. This is why social justice warriors don't find most jokes funny. The phrase, it's funny because it's true, is basically the very cornerstone of social justice warrior humor. It can only be funny if it's true. If it's not true, it's not funny. Non-social justice warriors who understand opinions and assertions are two different things find humor in so-called falsehoods. How? because we accept that the so-called falsehoods is an opinion and therefore a form of truth. We are not just laughing at the message, but at the messenger as well. To the social justice warrior, laughing at the messenger is a form of judgment, therefore harmful, therefore hate speech. So the next time you find yourself dealing with a social justice warrior, or vice versa, take a step back. Ask yourself, am I making it clear that what I am saying is an assertion or an opinion? As well as, does the person I am speaking with understand the difference. By keeping this concept in the back of your mind when you are in debate with a non-social justice warrior or social justice warrior, you will have a much better time understanding where they are coming from and hopefully will be able to rephrase your statements in a fashion that they can understand. It may be difficult to accept such a fundamental paradigm shift, but if you can do it, you will find your ability to communicate with those who have alien mindsets vastly improved. As a side note, while it is obvious that I have a preference to the non-social justice warrior mindset regarding this issue, I do not entirely discount the belief that opinions must be treated as assertions. This video is not standing in judgment. It is an analysis. While I think that the belief is objectively wrong, I do not think that the belief is subjectively wrong. Like all concepts, context and application are important. I do see some advantages to this paradigm. I can understand how in some circumstances there might be a great benefit. The paradigm could not exist in our society if it did not have some form of return for those who hold it. So do not take my assertions as personal attacks. I am not judging social justice warriors. I am merely making claims as to the state of communications between social justice warriors and non-social justice warriors and I am attempting to understand the mindset, and therefore spread this understanding. What you do with this knowledge is entirely up to you. Just something to think about. Anyway, so that's the end of the show. I welcome all feedback in the comments, I just might not notice or care. If you enjoy this, be sure to like, share, and submit to the will of the Eldritch God. You have been listening to Umfoth Neverborn, the abyss that slumbers. And as a reminder to all my followers, the great culling will soon be upon you. We're advising our clients to put everything they've got into canned food and shotguns. Up next, an investigation by Ron Boatman into the threat posed by unattended shopping carts. Find out how many of your children are already statistically dead and why you're going to jail due to criminal negligence. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light.